This conversation is powered by Google Illuminate. Check out illuminate.google.com for more. All right, let's dive into this paper. Were RNNs all we needed? It's a fascinating revisit of recurrent neural networks, RNNs, specifically LSTMs and GRUs, in light of the recent transformer craze. The authors claim to have made some pretty significant efficiency improvements. What's the core argument here? The core argument is that while transformers have dominated sequence modeling, their quadratic complexity with sequence length is a major bottleneck. RNNs, traditionally slow due to backpropagation through time, BPTT, can be made surprisingly efficient. The authors show how to modify LSTMs and GRUs to eliminate the need for BPTT, enabling parallel training. So they're essentially arguing that with some clever tweaks, we can revive these older architectures and make them competitive with the current state of the art? Precisely. The key is removing the hidden state dependencies from the input, forget, and update gates of LSTMs and GRUs. This allows for parallel computation using the parallel prefix scan algorithm. That's a pretty significant modification. What are the practical implications of removing those dependencies? It drastically speeds up training. They report a 175x speed up for min GRUs and a 235x speed up for min LSTMs compared to their traditional counterparts for a sequence length of 512. This is a game changer for long sequences. And what about the performance? Do these minimal versions sacrifice accuracy for speed? Surprisingly, no. The paper shows that min LSTMs and min GRUs achieve comparable performance to recent state-of-the-art models, like Mamba, on tasks like the selective copying task and various reinforcement learning benchmarks. That's quite remarkable. But what about the limitations of this approach? Are there any drawbacks to this simplification? The main limitation is the increased memory footprint due to the parallel computation. Also, while the first layer's gates are time independent, subsequent layers become time dependent again, impacting the complexity of the functions they can model. The paper acknowledges that their experiments were conducted on relatively smaller GPUs, so scaling up to larger datasets and models might present challenges. So the paper suggests that with some clever engineering, we might not need to completely abandon RNNs. It's a compelling argument, especially considering the speed improvements. Thanks for breaking this down. The authors also highlight the surprising similarity in the core recurrent components of many recently proposed efficient sequence models, including their min LSTM and min GRU, suggesting a common underlying algorithmic structure. This opens up possibilities for further optimization and cross-fertilization of ideas across different architectures. Interesting. The paper mentions the use of the parallel prefix scan algorithm. Can you elaborate on its role in achieving parallel training? The parallel prefix scan algorithm allows for the efficient parallel computation of prefix sums, or more generally, cumulative operations. By reformulating the recurrent updates of the modified LSTMs and GRUs to resemble this form, the authors enable parallel computation of the hidden states across the entire sequence, eliminating the sequential dependency inherent in traditional BPTT. So it's not just about the architectural changes to the LSTMs and DRUs themselves, but also the clever application of this algorithm that unlocks the parallel training capability? Exactly. The algorithm is crucial in enabling the parallel computation, and the architectural modifications are designed to make the recurrent updates compatible with the algorithm's requirements. The paper also discusses the importance of ensuring the output is time independent in scale. Why is this crucial for training stability? Time dependency in the scale of the output can lead to vanishing or exploding gradients during training, making optimization difficult. By ensuring time independence, the authors improve training stability and avoid the need for specialized parameter initializations often required in other parallel RNN approaches. The paper compares MinLSTM and MinGRU to other parallel RNNs like Mamba and S4. What are the key similarities and differences? The key similarity is that all these models, including MinLSTM and MinGRU, can be viewed as members of the same family of functions trainable via a parallel scan. The differences lie primarily in how the transition matrices or gates are computed from the input tokens. Mamba, for instance, uses input-dependent transition matrices, while MinLSTM and MinGRU use simpler, input-only gates. The paper mentions that even with this simplification, the models still perform well on various tasks. Can you elaborate on the specific tasks and the performance achieved? 
The paper evaluates the models on the selective copying task, various Muhoko locomotion tasks from the D4R benchmark, and a character level language modeling task on Shakespeare's works. In all cases, MIN LSTM and MIN GRU show competitive performance compared to state of the art models, often matching or exceeding the performance of other parallel RNNs. The paper concludes by questioning whether RNNs were all we needed. Given the results, what's your take on that provocative statement? The results certainly suggest that with careful design and algorithmic choices, RNNs can be highly competitive with transformers, especially for long sequences. The efficiency gains are substantial, and the performance is comparable. It's a strong argument for reconsidering the role of RNNs in sequence modeling. However, it's important to remember the limitations discussed earlier, particularly regarding memory usage and the time dependency that re-emerges in deeper networks. A fascinating discussion. It seems like this paper opens up new avenues for research in RNNs, potentially leading to more efficient and powerful sequence models. Thank you.